praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Household of GGIC, we are welcome to the presence of the Most High God. We thank God for the opportunity that we have today to be the women of valor, to stand in the presence of the Most High God, to declare liberty in the land of the living. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come before your presence. As the entrance of your word, we give understanding this morning that you will rule in our midst. And your purpose will be established in this place, in the mighty name of Jesus. I soak myself in the blood of Jesus. And I present the liberty of the cross to take preeminence as I speak. In the mighty name of Jesus. As we are going to hear your word, both the speaker and the hearer, that we will be really blessed and God will be glorified in Jesus' victorious name. As our topic for this Women Takeover says, Women of Valor. When we talk about women of valor, our physician is on Proverbs 31, verse 10 to 31. And if we look at verse 10 and 12 of that proverb, it gives us the value. And we understand that the value of women that we are talking in this book, they are far above Ruby. They are trustworthy women. They bring good and honor to their territories and not arms. In verse 13 to 19, we we'll understand that the women that we are talking about they are diligent, they are hard workers, they are resourceful, and they take care of their territories, they take care of their businesses, their homes. From verse 20 to 21, they are known as compassionate women. So, household of GGIC, you are compassionate women know yourself to be. You are not distracted in the vineyard. You have a purpose and you will fulfill your purpose. They extend their hands to the poor and the needy. In verse 25 and 27, we know that these women that we are talking about were clothed with strength. They are clothed with dignity. They speak with wisdom. And we've been hearing this. How she watch over the affairs of her household. How she make to known to the people around her that it is diligent to serve the Lord. In verse 28 and 29, we understand that this woman of valor that we are talking about, their children consider them to be a women that are fearing the Lord. Their husband praise them. And they walk in the strength of the Most High. We are used to hearing that about women of valor. But this morning, we are going to take a different dimension. We are going to look at women of valor as moral and spiritual courage. When we look at women of valor with moral and spiritual courage, what comes to the limelight is Esther. Esther, chapter 4, verse 13 to 16. Then Mordecai commanded 
And answer Esther. Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. What we are being told here, Esther valor is evident when she risked her life to approach the king to plead for the salvation of her people. Household of GGIC, are you standing in the gap to defend the cause of your family? Her bravery was not just physical. She stand for justice and her people of her people, despite the circumstances that was at hand. Mordecai was telling Esther, <laughs> at this time where you are, you need to take position. You need to act. You cannot be in the palace just for no reason. If we, at this time when you are in the palace, if you fail to take your purpose, if you are too silent, as you are as a Jew, if the Jewish are destroyed, know there is no room of escape for you. So Mordecai told Esther, if you don't act now, your inaction is very dangerous. Household of GGIC, women of valor, you ought to act, you need to act. As a Jewish queen, she was told that if she failed to deliver our people, she will perish. Are you interceding for your people? Do you have purpose in destiny? What is your purpose? Divine place as queen for a specific purpose is that palace for Esther. And what she needs to do at that point is to take courage. If she failed to take courage, if she failed to act, if she failed to step forward, the uncertainty lies ahead of her. So then, as women in household of God, we have to come to fulfill our purpose. We are not just here in vain. Our purpose is to be courageous. Our purpose is to have a spiritual courage from within to stand in the gap for our generation. We are not bench warmers in the house of the Lord. We might face dangerous situations and uncertainty. We might face circumstances that might want to pull us back. But what we need to do in order to fulfill our purpose is to summon our spiritual courage to connect ourselves to that living water who is the Holy Spirit that is given to us by the efficacy of the blood of Jesus so we can seize the opportunity to fight and face injustice, to fight adversity, to seize opportunity and be an instrument of deliverance wherever we stand. Esther, as an ordinary girl, accept the extraordinary responsibility. So we are going to take it as a prayer point right now. Make me an agent of deliverance in your house, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's turn it to prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I say stand before you today. Make me an agent of deliverance everywhere I stand. In the mighty name of Jesus, as a woman in this house, I stand on the platform of the blood of Jesus. That you will make me an agent of deliverance to my household, to my generation, to my congregation, to where I am in the mighty name of Jesus. It will not be about me. It will be about the spiritual courage of the Lord that will be back in me. In Jesus' victorious name, we have prayed. Another woman that we are going to visit... For a moral and spiritual courage is Rahab. We know that Rahab is a Gentile. A Canaanite woman who resides in Jericho. 
in the promised land. Gentile in the promised land. Look at her position. But her valor is shown as she eyed the Israelite spies and helped them to escape despite the danger to herself and her family. We know that Rahab is an alert. By the words of man, she ought to be disqualified. Not to have ability to have any connection, but her faith in God and God's plan for her life give her courage to act bravely. That shows us that God is in the business of saving even the worst sinner. No matter what your situation and circumstances is, do not stand and fold your hand when you ought to take courage, when you ought to have a moral strength. Never give up. Rehab, an example, stand as a testimony for us today and teaching us that no matter how things had gone in the past or how dark things might appear, present your faith. Faith in God and obedience in his word will save us from destructions of sin and give us future and hope. Rahab was known to be a condemned person. But the purpose of God in her life make her to be a role model. Rahab consists in confirming the words of God before the Israelites in stressing his power to put them into effect. So we are going to pray. It is not about the container. It is about the content. Oh Lord, use me. It is not about your appearance. It is about the infilling in you. What is it that God has placed in you? What purpose are you supposed to serve on earth? There are drivers' distractions that will come your way in order for you not to fulfill your purpose in destiny. But as a woman of valor, with the moral and spiritual courage that is embedded in you, you will stand the trial of the day. So we are going to tell the Lord, it is not about me. It's not about my packaging. It's about what is laid within me. Oh Lord, I am a clay in the hand of the mortar. Use me. Let's turn it to prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come in the name that is tried and tested. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am a clay in the hand of the mortar. Oh Lord, mold me. Oh Lord, use me. Use me for your work, oh Lord. Establish me in your way, oh Lord. Let your purpose be established in my life. Let me rule in dominion all the days of my life. Let my purpose be established in the land of the living. Every distraction that is arrogating against my purpose in life. Oh, I raise the standard of the blood of Jesus against them. And I say, Lord, by the power in the blood of Jesus, I will continue to rule in dominion. All the days of my life, in Jesus' victorious name, we have prayed. We are going to look at valor as strength and leadership. That will take us to the book of First Samuel, chapter 25. Valor as strength and leadership. In that First Samuel... We understand that Deborah, a judge, a prophetess, exhibited valor by leading Israel into battle against their enemy. Give me Judges, Judges, Judges chapter 4 to, four, chapter four to chapter 5. Deborah's leadership was marked by wisdom. And courage, and she played a crucial role in securing Israel's victory. Deborah was recognized for her wisdom, and people came to her for counsel and conflict resolution. She recognized a supreme commander. She goes to war on a personal command. Though Deborah through Deborah, we understand that the Lord gave victory 
through those who are willing to follow. Are you willing to follow? Or are you just marking time? Deborah was willing to follow the leading of the Lord. So he was able to stand. By following God's leading, Deborah was able to address kings and princes in Canaan. Deborah was courageous. She was called to lead at a difficult time. When Israelites were under siege for 20 years, Deborah, a woman, showed up. God's user as a deliverer. Deborah served with wisdom and knowledge. She has a good listening skill. When she hears the word, she does not respond with hasty. She has abundance of wisdom. She's obedient to God's command. Are you obedient to God's command? Do you rush into actions when words are spoken? Or do you reason in order to add value to the word that you are hearing? Due to the wisdom, give me Judges chapter 4 verse 5. And she dealt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and between the Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. Household of GGIC, when people come to you for advice, when they seek your counsel, are you a destroyer or are you a builder? Deborah was a builder. Deborah supported the people that she was called to lead. Give me verses 6 and 7. Judges 4, 6 and 7. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinam, out of Keshidanepthal, and, and said unto him, Had not the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded, saying, Go. Deborah supported the people, and God called her to lead. With the courage, she called Barak. So we are going to tell the Lord, at this time, O oh Lord, use me for your work. Give me wisdom to give direction adequately when I am called for instruction. Let's turn it to prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come before you today, oh Lord, that you will direct me to lead adequately. When I am called for instruction, you will fill me, oh Lord. You will fill me with your word. You will fill me with your wisdom. You will guide my tongue. You will establish my purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, my Father, as I come unto you, when people come to me for instruction, I will be a builder and not a destroyer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will demonstrate sadness in the spirit and in the earth. In Jesus' victorious name, we pray. Je Deborah was trusted. In verse 8 of that Judges 4, she had a position due to her faith in God. She was respected for a strong faith. And it was that faith that allowed her to have influence on Barak. If a woman called you now, eh, Ogasa, come. I want you to follow me to war. She'll be like, what type of war? Who, when, where? But Deborah was trusted. She wasn't doubted. Barak followed her. This time, Deborah, if you are not going to that war with me, Forget the going of the war. I'm not going anywhere. The confidence that a man can place upon Deborah, trusting her judgment. Can you be trusted, women of valor? So we are going to tell the Lord. Wisdom to know how to do things right. In order for me to gain trust in the, the for, to gain the trust around me, 
for people to be able to see me as being reliable and dependable, release unto me as a woman in this house. Let's turn it to prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, give unto me, O oh Lord, the grace and enablement to be trusted. So when I open my mouth to speak your word, in season and out of season, that men will yield unto you, and your glory will continue to be seen in all areas of my life. In Jesus' victorious name, we pray. We are going to see that Deborah was direct. She wasn't fidgeting. She wasn't parabolating. She spoke the word of God, not parabolating, not daily darling, not looking elsewhere. She spoke the word. As in Judges chapter 4, verse 9, please. And she said, I will surely go with thee. She didn't give an excuse. You know, I'm a woman. How am I going to do it? What will I do? She went straight to the instruction. You want me to go? Oh, yes. I will surely go with you. Notwithstanding the journey that thou thicket shall not be for thine. So we are going to tell the Lord, in my journey in life, O oh Lord, take all the glory. You are not doing it because of man. She wasn't doing it because of herself. She was doing it so God can take all the glory. Household of GGIC, are you working in the presence of the Lord for the Lord to be glorified in your life? Or are you doing it to take glory? So we are going to tell the Lord, all that I do in your presence, Endow me with the grace that the glory will be ascribed back unto you so men can be blessed. Let's turn it to prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, eternal rock of ages, I shall stand before you as I walk in your vineyard in all that I do. Oh Lord, have your way. Oh Lord, take all the glory. It is not about me. It is about you that your name will be glorified. Your name will be edified in the mighty name of Jesus. You will give me clear direction. You will lead me aright in Jesus' victorious name. We pray. It was very clear that the Israelites that she shared God's message with are not her own agenda. It was God's agenda. So, Deborah was known for her confidence. As in Judges chapter 4, verse 14. And Deborah said unto Barak, Unto, for this is the day in which the Lord had delivered Caesarea into the hand. It is not thee, Lord, gone out before thee. So Barak went down. From the month of Tabor with 10,000 men after him. So we are going to tell the Lord. She placed her confidence in God when the battle was about to start. She wasn't fidgeting. She never hesitated to fulfill God's command. And her assurance and strength and belief is in the Lord God's that allotted victory to them. So you are going to tell the Lord, in this house, at this hour, at this time, give me confidence. Confidence that I will be able to face situations and circumstances of this world. That I will have that reassurance and that strength and that belief in me that the Lord will allot me victory. Some people will have situations ahead of them. They will lose hope. They will forget who God is. So, women of valor in the house, this is the time that you will cry to the Lord. Endow me with confidence. Give me the strength from within. Let me be able to stand all the days of my life. Let's turn it to prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, as I come before you today, O oh Lord, as Deborah did have confidence in you, and increase my confidence in you, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, never allow me to hesitate to fulfill your command. In the mighty name of Jesus, the ability to have a reassurance and strength and believe in you, release unto me. In Jesus' victorious name, we have prayed. Deborah was humble. Judges 
chapter 5, verse 5. The humility of Deborah. The mountain melted from before the Lord. Even that Sinai from before the Lord God of Israel. De despite the fact of them going to war, Deborah understood that at this time, all I want to do is to praise the name of the Lord, to give glory to the Lord, for I know that victory will be allotted unto me. So she gave praises to the Lord, she glorified the name of the Lord, and in doing so, she collected total victory even before the war began. So, this is giving us a note, a key to hold on to when situations become tough and you are wondering how to go about it, turn to praise. Praise confuses Satan on your journey. When you praise the Lord, you hold the hand of Satan and he will not be able to perform his enterprise over you. When you praise the Lord, you bring the glory of the Lord into that situation. And the Lord God Almighty will be glorified at last. So, Deborah was humble, wasn't looking at himself, wasn't focusing at herself, focusing on praising the Lord that is able to do all things. And in that way, he was able to bring the glory of the Lord down. And the glory of the Lord gave them victory. Deborah and Barak sang a song of thanksgiving and they praised the Lord and they had peace for 40 years in the land of the living because their obedience had lotted them total victory. So we are going to tell the Lord, at this hour, oh Lord, give me the grace that when the battle becomes wrong, I will turn to praise to confuse Satan in the journey of my life. Let's turn it to prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, as we come before you as household of GGIC, in the journey of life and in the marketplace of life, when the battle becomes strong, oh Lord, give us the grace, oh Lord, to turn it to praise, in order for all to be allotted total victory that surpasses human imagination. In the mighty name of Jesus, Deborah understood when he needs to praise. He called unto the Lord with praises and thanksgiving, and he was given total victory in the battle of life. A lot us total victory in the battle of life in Jesus victorious name we have prayed we are going to visit Valo as a strength and leadership in the life of Miriam in the book of Exodus 15 chapter 20 and 21 the sister of Moses and Aaron showed Valo as a leader among the Israelites during the Exodus, she led the worship and had the courage to challenge even her brother Moses when necessary. Miriam, a prophetess, took a tambourine in her hand and all the women followed her with a tambourine and dancing and Miriam sang to the Lord. Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both the horses and the riders are behold into the sea. What are the situation and circumstances that you are looking ahead of you? And you think you have nowhere to turn to. You look at your back, you cannot go back. You are looking forward, there are obstacles ahead of you. What we are being told here is Moses showed her leadership. And what did she do? She worshipped the Lord. So, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and the riders has been thrown into the sea. Who are the horses and the riders in your life? Where are they? What are they doing? Are you focusing on them? Are you being distracted? 
in order for your deliverance to be certain, in order for you to have total victory, in order for you to be able to praise the Lord, in order for you to worship the Lord in holiness, in order for God's faithfulness to be allotted unto you, you need to know how to stand your ground in praise. His ability to triumph over the enemy and to call to remembrance and to celebrate God's miraculous work and to offer to the Lord praise and worship in a rightful way. He was she was able to celebrate when they passed through the sea. They were being delivered from Pharaoh. They passed through the wilderness. They came to a dry land. They, she now understood that it is not by their power that they have done it. So you are going to tell the Lord today. What are those situations in your life that you don't know where to turn, what to do? Oh Lord, release unto me ability to sing praises unto you in order to gain my grant. Let's turn it to prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, as I come before you today, as I praise and exalt your holy name, release unto me, O Lord, ability to sing the song of deliverance at the end of the journey. So man can know that it is about you, not about me. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever it is that stands as distraction and obstacle in my way, O Lord, arise. Deal with them today. Bring them to nothing. Uphold your standard in my life. Rule over me. Rule in my life. Rule in my own. So I can continue to sing a song of hallelujah. I can continue to sing a song of triumph. I can continue to sing a song of an overcomer. In Jesus' victorious name, we have prayed. We are going to look at valor as wisdom and righteousness. As in 1 Samuel chapter 25. And we're going to focus on Abigail. Abigail valor is shown in her wisdom and a quick action to prevent bloodshed between her husband, Nebel, and David. A discernment ability to mediate between the two serve an example of valor of wisdom. We also can talk about a submission that leads to deliverance. Abigail, an humble woman, combined her wisdom with her wealth to appear and approach an enemy and plead for the safety of her husband's household. Are you interceding in your homes? Abigail teaches us how to let God's love and wisdom flow through us to others. Abigail teaches us how to live vengeance for God alone. Abigail is known for her courage, for her wisdom and her humility. So we are going to pray. Oh Lord, give me the power to, of resistant generosity and humility to change the world of my family and my environment. Let's turn it to prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, release unto me, O oh Lord, resistant generosity and humility to change the world and, uh, in my environment and in my family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Abigail was not looking at what she wanted to give away. She was looking at peace must reign in my territory. What are you looking at? Must be reign in your territory? Are you standing for peace? Or are you materialistic that you get distracted by material things? Abigail did not get distracted by material things. She focused on uh, that, no, wherever I am, the peace of God must rule. And that's exactly what happened. The peace of the Lord will rule in our life in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are going to walk out Look at Ruth, valor as wisdom and righteousness in the life of Ruth. Ruth chapter 2. Ruth valor is displayed through her loyalty and dedication to her mother-in-law Naomi. And her willingness to work hard to provide 
for them. Root action was grounded in righteousness and faithfulness. And this leader to an ancestor of King David. The fact in the life of Ruth, Ruth was a Gentile from the land of Moab, yes. A widow of an Israelite, yes. She left her family and go with her mother-in-law, who is also a widow, yes. Naomi doesn't have a child when we are talking about they were living in obscurity. But our hope was in the Lord. If God can take something away from you that you never expected that you can lose, he can also replace something that you never thought that you can get. He replaced all what was lost in the life of Naomi. Ruth chose to serve God of Naomi. And this is the Lord, the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This God that we are talking about is Jehovah, the man of war. This God that we are talking about is the one that has triumphed in situations and circumstances beyond human imagination. God now in turn bless Ruth in an imagine, unimaginable way. Your past is not your final destination. You have a purpose in destiny if you are still breathing. The choice that you made in the past, if it's not according to the will of God for your life, you can repack yourself. You can choose again. Choose to live. Choose to rule in dominion. And when you have confidence in God and in his promises, you will laugh at last. And those that laugh last are those that have the better laugh. Your yesterday must not determine what your tomorrow will be. You have to focus and have confidence in the Lord that the purpose and the promise of the Lord for my life must come to manifestation. It does not matter what the people say. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the eyes could see. You are exalted. You are the most high God. When you are not focusing on what you are seeing, where you are, what you hear, and you are focusing on the most high God, the one that is able to do all things for you, you will have a better life. God uses small things to accomplish great plan in the land of, in the life of Ruth. Ruth was loyal. Ruth was a poor girl. She followed her mother-in-law. All those negative pieces were put together in her life. And those negative pieces gave room for the big thing that happened to her. God intended for Ruth to be part of the story of the lineage of Jesus Christ. What is God packaging in your life? Where are you now? Are you confessing what God has in purpose for you? Or are you distracted about the things that you see around you? That is not glorifying God in your life. So you are going to tell the Lord. Take glory over my life. Take glory over my life. Take glory over my life. It does not matter what I'm looking at now. All I am saying Lord is that you take glory over my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. It does not matter what situation is presenting in my life. All, all I'm saying is Lord. Take glory. Take glory over my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord, my Father, take glory over my life. Take glory in my home. Take glory in the life of my children. Take glory in our church. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord, take glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The Lord pull all the negative events 
together in the life of Ruth. The farming, the relocation of Naomi to Moab, the return to Bethlehem, and at the long run. She was connected to Boaz and became a lineage of an event that ensured Ruth could be part of God's plan. And God does the same thing in our life today. So we are going to tell the Lord, all my past bitterness, all my losses, all the negative encounters that I have encountered, use them as a tool to bring a brighter and a better future into my life. Let's turn into prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, every of my past business, my losses, my past negative encounters, oh Lord, use them as a tool to give me a brighter and a better future. In Jesus' victorious name, we have prayed. We can see that God, as our Redeemer, is in this place. He's able to rescue his own people from every devastation, no matter what it is. God, as a Redeemer for your life, is sent you Jesus Christ. He gave you a prophetic symbol in Christ. His redemptive work in your life is able to take you to your expectation of tomorrow. Whatever is in your life that has served as emptier of your destiny, today is your day of spiritual solution. Every dissolution of the past hangs in your life today by the power in the name of Jesus. And you will continue to be a carrier of God's glory. Because you are serving the living God, his purpose will be established in your life. I have a good news for you. Jesus is willing to redeem you if you come to him. He wants to rescue you if you allow him to rule in your life. The penalty of your sins has been paid by the precious blood of Jesus. Your faith in the Lord will make you to stand tall and firm in the marketplace of life, no matter what the situation presents. It is not about you. It is about God. No one is exempted from tragedy. We just have to understand that. We live in an unfair world. We just have to know that. We live in a world of disappointment and confusion. We just have to understand that. But the surety that we have is that precious blood of Jesus that was shed for us. He suffered for us. He died on the cross. Our sins were nailed to the cross with him. The cross revealed what kind of world that we have. And the world that we have that we are able to stand firm on is the word of Jesus. So in all situations of our life, we should know how to plead the blood of Jesus. What kind of word we have and what kind of God we serve. A word of God is the word that is going to serve as a sacrifice and is a never-ending sacrifice of love that is being paid for by the blood of Jesus. In conclusion, household of GGIC, valor is a universal quality. We have to be courageous. We have to be strengthened. We have to understand that God is for us. Once you have the wisdom that no matter what, God is on your side, be committed to righteousness. Walk in faith. And when you are in battle. Know that it is not your battle. It is the battle of the Lord. We are called to embody valor, household of GGIC. The Bible celebrates those who act with bravery. True valor is rooted in your relationship with God. What is your relationship with God? Are you get dedicated to God? 
or are you doing lip and eye service? The deep understanding of valor encourages believers to seek strength in their faith, to act with courage in face of every adversity, to live life that is mark of wisdom and righteousness. Let us stand up and pray. We are going to tell the Lord, this year, I come as a woman and man of valor. Everything that I need in order for my life to be fulfilled, let it be released upon me so God can take glory over me. In the mighty name of Jesus, let's turn into prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we have come unto you this year, O oh Lord, with example of moral and spiritual courage in you. We come and we study about strength and leadership. We have come and we understand the wisdom and righteousness with overall quality to have the strength, the wisdom, and the commitment to righteousness and to continue to have faith in you is the only way that we can live as the women and men of valor. Endow us with wisdom to do it so we can be a child of you forever so you can take glory over us and by this time next year we come to celebrate in your presence again in jesus name we pray